Oh yeah, here it comes. Jason in your stupid face. That's right, boys. Weep. It's the pain game, and it's coming. My favorite. Here it comes, guys. Ha! Ha! Yes! Ha! Ah, put a little bit more bone in it, man. Ha! Ah, yes! Yes! Teamwork, guys. Come on. And... Ah! Almost got him. Ha! Ha! Yes! Yeah! Skeletons! Skeletons! Welcome back to Creatures, Caverns, and Crafting. If you could tell from the intro, today's video is going to be about skeletons. And primarily, we're going to focus on the skeleton army. You can buy these at the dollar store. Now, there are several videos out there on YouTube already about these particular skeleton army minis. And I'm just going to do my own spin. I'm going to walk you through some of the uh, steps I take to prepare these and put them through a little stress test. First of all, we're going to take a good look at the figures themselves. These are really good sculpts. There is some flashing on them. The figures are bendy. Here is another one for you guys to take a look at. And I'm going to probably clean these up using a utility knife and maybe a little bit of sandpaper. May even remove the bottom base here. Maybe take that off and replace that with a standard 28 millimeter base just to make them look a little bit better. And here we have the skeletons after I've done some cleanup work on them grab one so you guys can see a better look at it. I did remove the bottom base and uh, here's the 28 millimeter base I was talking about. These do line up pretty well. I did pay special attention to the heads of these and I used a sanding block just to kind of clean up and of course the utility knife. Now guys this is all extra work. You don't have to do that. If you want to leave one with the base on it like so that's that's more than perfect. Uh, these are 10 cent minis, so if you don't even want to do the cleanup or the flashing, you don't have to do that either. So now we're going to go ahead and move on to cleaning these. I'm just using a little bit of warm water and some Dawn soap. We want to make sure that we get rid of any releasing agent that might still be left on the figs. We're we'll going to allow those to dry and move on. As a test batch, I'm going to take these two skeletons and I'm going to put them in a 70% solution of isopropylene rubbing alcohol and see if we get some better results. I'm just going to let these soak for a couple of hours and then we'll check back with them. So next we're going to go ahead and take the minis and we're going to put those onto a painting stick. Now as you can see from the picture I've already put these on a 28 millimeter base. I used an E6000 to do that and also put a penny underneath just to give them some weight. Now I'm going to go ahead and prime the skeletons using a skeleton bone by Army Painter. We're going to allow this to dry for several hours and then we're going to go on and move to our base colors. So for our base paints I'm going to use this burnt umber for the wood. And I'm using a folk arts craft paint, so you don't have to do anything special or get any type of special expensive paint to do this. For the metal parts, I'm going to use a mixture of silver and also that burnt umber that we used earlier. Now guys, you can use whatever metal paint you have on hand. If you have a lighter shade brown, you can use that as well. We're going to apply this in thin coats, like so. And then we're going to allow that to dry and if we got to apply a second or third coat we can do that. Now we're going to move on to applying my secret weapon and that is the Quick Shade by Army Painter and I'm using a strong tone for this application. If you've watched my channel before I use this method in a lot of my uh, painting especially when I'm working with the muscle figures or any other plastic figures. What we're going to do is just dip the figure into the container like so and we're just going to start brushing off any excess and I'm using a relatively soft brush. Uh, this is inexpensive. I'll probably throw it away but if you wanted to save your brush you, you could probably use mineral spirits or paint thinner to uh, clean your brush off afterwards. And what we're going to do is just grab a napkin here we can wipe off some of the excess onto that. What I'm looking for here is, is just to evenly apply it all over the figure. 
we want to make sure that it's not pulling around the feed or in any of the other crevices on the mini. So this did come out a little darker than I originally anticipated. So what I wanted to do is use a soft tone and just do a comparison. Here is a side by side. This is the soft tone and the sword is the strong tone. Not much of a difference. Now guys, I call this my secret weapon because this is a pigment varnish and I'm hoping that this will create a good enough bond on the figure that I won't have to worry about cracking or chipping. If you're a follower of Blanco's channel on YouTube, he did an in-depth video on this where he showed uh, several stress tests being performed and the Donald Store minis didn't really work out for him. So hopefully we'll see how this goes. All right, guys, so here's the mini. And the quick shade has cured overnight, probably about 12, 13 hours. This is the flattest surface that I could find out of all the figs. And I'm gonna go ahead and start scratching with my finger now. Focus in for you guys so you can see it better. And it seems to be holding up. Go ahead and start on the skull here. And guys, I don't know if you can tell from the video, I am doing this pretty rigorously. I'm gonna go ahead and rub on it as well with my thumb and it's holding up. Let's do some light twisting. I'm just looking to see if I can create some cracking. Seems to be doing pretty well. Let's maybe focus on the feet down here, see if we can get something to occur. And overall, this does seem to be doing pretty well. Let's try another figure. This is the one we did in the strong tone. Let's go ahead and start scratching. Let's focus on the edge here. Now guys, I'm not going to do any extreme twisting. Uh, if you're going to do like a 90 degree twist on this, you're probably going to see some cracking or you may even break the figure. Now that is something to consider if you're playing with some younger players or maybe you're going to a con and you just, you know, these figures are going to be used for the general public. You might see some strain on these. But overall, these were 10 cents. I put a penny underneath, so 11 cents and whatever time and effort it took me to paint these. I'm not too concerned about that. Overall, these do hold up pretty well. Uh, I did want to show you guys, I did see a little bit of cracking on one of the figures. This one had a straight arm out and you can barely see it, it's on the shoulder. But it seems to be very small and I haven't seen this on any of the other figures so I'm pretty pleased with the results. But our test wouldn't be complete unless we also did the same stress test on the ones that were in the chemical bath and I'm just going to go ahead and start scratching and doing some slight twisting on this fig as well now out of all the figs these probably had the most cure time with the quick shade and the primer also note that i soaked these in the isopropylene for a few hours Scratch up top, it seems to be bonded. Do a little up here on the axe. We'll do some twisting and we have a crack. So as far as a better result, I can't say the rubbing alcohol did anything better for us. I'm gonna apply a coat of Tester's Dull Coat to the minis. And what this is gonna do is, after the quick shade has dried, you're gonna notice a glossy shine to the figures. This is really gonna eliminate all of that. If you need to, apply maybe one to two coats of this. And now we're gonna move on to applying some dry brushing and some technical paints. So now I'm gonna start with a Screaming Skull. And what we're gonna do here is apply a dry brushing technique. I'm going to wipe off any excess paint off the brush onto the napkin. Here's our mini. And what I'm going to do is just focus on the top here. Maybe up here at the hands. A bit on the rib cage. Flip it on the back, get the top of the skull in the back. When we're doing this, guys, what we want to think about is where a light would be hitting. The mini Just a 
looking good. I'm sure we get that arm. I'm thinking maybe down here on the legs because the knee is popping out a little bit. We don't have to go completely crazy with it. Now I'm going to move on to another color. This is the Dry White by Citadel. It's very dry when you first open it. You may think it's gone bad, but it actually looks like that. It's supposed to look like that. And we're going to do just some gentle highlights with this. And I'm going to primarily focus again on the top of the skull here. Might have went a little heavy there on the face. It's okay, we can wipe that away. Get the shoulders up over here. There we go. And of course, we want to get the back of the model as well. All right, guys, this is starting to look really nice. We'll just finish this up and then we'll move on to some technical paints and uh, of course taking care of that plain drab base that we have the model glued to. So to start on the bases what I'm going to do is just use a matte black. You can use any craft paint that you have that's black and I'm just going to apply that using some light coats. Uh, again remember we can apply this and build to a nice solid color. We don't have to glop it on. Uh, once we've done that, we're going to go ahead and apply four colors to create a cobblestone pattern. Uh, that's going to be golden dawn, a light gray, a darker gray, and we're also going to use a suede. Or you could also use an off-white if you have that. To do this, we're going to just make little circular motions. And then we can always go back and trim using that matte black if we have uh, any carryover from one color to the other. should look something kind of like this. So finally, we're going to apply a polyacrylic Minwax coat to the figures, and that includes the bases as well. We want to give this about two hours to fully cure, and then we'll go over it with a Tester's Dull Coat just to take out the shine. The polyacrylic really adds an extra level of protection to the figures, and if you started to see some small cracking, it may prevent that from occurring further. So let's see what they look like on the table, guys. And here we have the final project. Final thoughts on this. I really did enjoy this project however it did take some work dollar store minis might be a little advanced for someone first starting out crafting the paint does not always adhere and you may have to experiment to see if you can find a primer that does so and even then you still may run into the gambit of cracking or peeling Notice that I put a lot of sealers, some pigment varnish, just to add extra levels of protection. These are holding up well on my table. I don't think that they would be great if I played with a bunch of younger players. It might be a little bit rougher, but I have had fingers uh, on them, uh, scratching and some bending, and I haven't seen the uh, cracking that is prevalent with these type of models. So, mixed bag. I would try them if you're looking to just maybe experiment with something cheap, but don't be surprised if you run into some of the same issues. As always, we'll go ahead and leave you with a nice video at the end. You move here, and you move there. Hey, what are you looking at? Hey, stop looking at me that way. <laughs> ah! Wait a minute, why am I so small? Hey guys, take it easy. Nope. Get them, boys! Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to my channel. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and follow. More importantly, share this with someone that might like this type of craft. As always, be safe. I hope that you and your friends and your family take care during this pandemic, and we'll catch you on the flip side.